We were across the street in the Donner Building, really a dungeon, quite frankly, when we started out. It was quite a small department. It was reasonably awful. There was probably one of the last Van de Graaff generators still treating patients in the United States. Some of the treatment rooms were so small that you couldn't do modern things in them. In 1977, the department was actually split from radiology and became its own independent department. That's when Bob Goodman was hired to become chair of radiation oncology here at Penn, and he really laid the foundation for the future. I like to be a builder. I recruited four or five really top-notch faculty. Dr. Kligerman was one of the tough guy giants of radiation oncology. It's Dr. Dangio, who's a gentleman and a true scholar of pediatric cancer. The foundation of pediatric radiation oncology is really in the hands of people like Dr. D'Angio and also Dr. Gladstein, who really were the people who outlined how to take care of the diseases that young people get in terms of radiating them. I didn't do it by myself, by no means. But when I started, the, the survival rate was maybe 20, 25 percent. When I left, it was 85 percent. I was actually here 11 years, and I would say very early on, Penn developed a really outstanding national reputation. In the 1990s, Gillis McKenna was recruited as chair of the Department of Radiation Oncology, and he really brought a vision of biology and how we integrate biology into technology. Dr. McKenna is a great man. He was a pioneering physician scientist in radiation oncology. He really thought about how one would take basic discoveries in the laboratory how you'd think about applying those into the clinic. He was the one who came up with the idea of bringing proton therapy into Penn Medicine. So I came back from the Astra meeting in 1994 and made an appointment with, with Bill Kelly, who was the dean at Penn, and told Bill that I thought Penn should develop a proton therapy center. Bill threw me out of his office. Gillis and his team, Jim Metz, Jim McDonough, and others, had really laid the groundwork with the Institution for Proton Therapy. He was able to convince the administration and the president of the university at the time that this was the right direction to go for cancer treatment. And so we set about designing a clinic that was fully integrated. We thought if protons are going to find their place in the radiation oncology world, it would be as an integrated part of what radiation oncologists do. It was just another modality of treatment. What we tried to do was to take the technology that was being introduced into the conventional radiotherapy and we applied it to protons to be able to generate the best treatment plans that were possible. Protons have really transformed the Department of Radiation Oncology, and we've taken that technology and pushed it to levels that no other institution has really been able to do up to this point in time. For a long, long, long time, CHOP and Penn have sort of shared the radiation oncology responsibilities of young children who need radiation for tumors. The opening of the Proton Center at HUP represented this huge collaboration between the two centers. Steve Hahn became chair after Gillis McKenna. He really looked at quality, quality and safety, and how important that was on the clinical side. Steve was really the key person in this vision of being able to translate our science directly to patient benefit. I was fortunate because I could come in at a time when others had really laid most of the groundwork to get this done. Having the two gyms and others in the institution run with that, they really built that proton center for Penn. And it is a showcase for the world of proton therapy. Jim Metz is our chair, and his vision is largely clinical expertise, along with laboratory investigation, and he wants to disseminate a large amount of what we do at Penn throughout the region and the country as a whole. I wanted to start taking that technology from this main center at the Perlman Center and bringing that closer to people's homes in the community. We've expanded our network considerably. We treat about 650 patients a day across our network. To me, what distinguishes a really great program 
is the commitment to training the next generation of leaders in the field, and Penn has been doing that now for decades. The Penn Radiation Oncology Training Program is one of the largest training programs in the country. It's, it's really a particularly exciting time for us to be at the forefront of educating the future. Penn prepares you for anything. We get training in every modality possible. We also see very complex cases and we're taught how to think through them. And when you look at that list of alum, it is uh, one of the most impressive lists. It's the who's who of radiation oncology in terms of leaders in academic and community practice. Everyone in the world of radiation oncology knows Eli. He's trained more residents who eventually became chairs across radiation oncology than anyone in history. I'm very proud of what we've been able to do with trainees, being able to mold their minds, to be able to think and reason intelligently, and instill in them a desire for truth and accuracy, consistency, and aim for perfection. The mission of this department, in addition to patient care and research, is to educate those across the country and across the world. We have a link to Oxford. We have a link to Botswana. So the Penn program in Botswana is larger than oncology, and it's been ongoing for the last decade. We have a dedicated clinic working on setting up treatment guidelines for the country, really setting up the oncology department from ground up. Whereas we used to consume technology in the past, we've now developed technology with the vendor. So we've really become an alpha site for proton therapy and photon therapy and other areas of imaging. We helped to develop the IBA variant and pencil beam scanning, which is now used in all the IBA centers. At Penn, what we're doing is combining our photodynamic therapy with the surgery. We're actually using it to light up the pleural cavity. Oncolink is started here in the Department of Radiation Oncology by Joel Goldwine. It has grown to become the largest website in the world for cancer information. At Penn, we work with NASA on a number of different projects. We've been developing methods to prevent or lessen the side effects of radiation. We're the first center in the world to bring in soft tissue imaging. Penn has an infrastructure, a faculty, a leadership at the institution that is a really special thing for American medicine. We've unbelievably transformed to a department of over 550 employees and staff. It's humbling to be a part of Penn and the Penn legacy. When you think about what a legacy truly means, it's about the people. But the Proton Center was the icing on the cake. But I look back on the 40 years of this department, I've seen that we've been positioned well at every step of radiation oncology in the past, and I firmly believe we're positioning ourselves for the future. Patients will always be the center of what we do, and that's the reason we're gonna keep coming to work, is how we actually make it better for the patient long term.